When I told my girlfriends about it, like, I'm, I've met this guy and I'm gonna go to his cabin in the middle of the woods, 13 hours away from where I'm living. Yeah. And they were like, have you seen horror movies, Christine? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Are you crazy? If this, for some reason, is the first video of us you're watching, my name is Kalle. And my name is Christine. And this is the very unlikely story of how we two met. Uh, there's been a lot of comments asking about how we met because... You know, I moved to a cabin in the middle of nowhere, and it's not exactly a dating friendly area, if you put it like that. Tinder is not like uh, on power out here, like that. <laughs> no, but I can admit I was on Tinder uh, when I moved here the very first time for a short while. And when I opened the app, I had to extend the max distance that you can have on the app uh, to reach other people to like max, max potential. <laughs> and there was like, three people <laughs> and so I was quickly through those three people and just said like okay maybe maybe this is not the, the thing for me uh, so that's where I started and I, and I actually I didn't worry about it but I really thought about what if I don't meet anyone out here I don't have any job I go to I meet people when I go to the store and so on but I don't have any social uh, gathering besides the old old men here in the, in the village that's it um, but even yeah. though, you know, you had that fault here mm -hmm. with, in the middle of nowhere, I had that fault in the city. Like, yeah. what if I don't gonna meet anyone that wants to move out to the middle of nowhere? Because yeah, that's true. I think we have a, quite the same, the same faults, actually. Yeah, that's true. And fear. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, that's true. I actually thought about, I had the same feelings as you had when... I lived in the city too. I was like, how am I going to find a woman that's aligning with my values but still live in the city? Because I dated a few people when I lived in the city, but there was no match because the mindset was so different. Yeah. And they had made up their mind of saying like, I'm going to stay in the city. This is my life. Mm. And that was such a deal breaker for me. I didn't know I was going to live in a cabin in the forest, but I knew I wanted something uh, different. Yeah. And you wanted the yeah, same thing. Yeah, me too. And... You know, for me, it was even a compromise to go to, you know, the, some of the countryside side towns mm. in Denmark, which I don't see as a countryside because it's like a lot of, I don't know, Pasethus. I have no idea what that means. Okay, a lot of, how to explain that? A lot of houses that is very close together. In like a, a community or? No, not a community. Oh, a Danish person would know what I mean. Like, uh, is it like d -d 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 yeah, very close together okay. and a bit like Stella Hum and where are you from? Like, okay, where, yeah. yeah, for me, that is not a countryside. For me, that's still a bit city feeling because mm -hmm. I want this, you know. Yeah, that's true. And I was a bit like, you know, how do I find that? You know, yeah. because it's so extreme. Yeah, that's true. Okay, so how did we meet each other? Do, do, should we start that story maybe? Do you want to? Tell it from your angle, and I can tell it from my perspective. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, in my um, in my realization of I was not happy in the city, and I would not be happy on a countryside uh, town either. I begin to seek people that have taken the big jump mm -hmm. and live in the middle of nowhere, and I. I read a lot of blogs, I search for people on Instagram and to just, just see, it was not to find a boyfriend, but to just see, oh, yeah. okay, they survived, <laughs> they are not become weirdo, they are not become lonely and all of that. And then I read, and then I read a blog and your face show up yeah. because you did a Swedish podcast. Yeah, in the blog post um, that person recommended uh, yeah, my blog I had with my friend Jacqueline back then. It was a Swedish podcast called Nyfiken på mindre, like curious about less, uh, to talk about minimalism and choosing a different lifestyle. Yeah. Um, and then my picture, like, yeah, the cover picture of the podcast, I guess, Yeah. Uh, showed up. And I remember that was the only thing I saw. That was your, <laughs> your face. I was just like, who is this guy? <laughs> I was like, oh my God, he's pretty. And... Um, and then I click into your Instagram and I was just like, you know, I was just, I don't know, that feeling where you just like, everything just stopped inside of you. And I was not searching for love because I was so tired of men, actually. <laughs> I was really focused on, 
I'm gonna move out in the middle of nowhere by myself, you know, no man in my life. Mm. Um, so I was like, first, I was actually a bit like worried if you have a girlfriend, mm. even though I was not searching for love. <laughs> I see what I mean. <laughs> um, but I was like, I, I don't know, there was just something calling in me that I have to write you. Mm. So I, after I've been following you for a month, I... Stalking, basically? Uh, no, nah, <laughs> I didn't stalk you. Um, then you had like a, a, a story with your tuss sleeping in your car. Oh yeah, that's true. I went to this um, Ekobruk, it's called, a, I went to education for a year, uh, where I learned about organic farming and everything that yeah, evolves around that. And me and a few friends in that class, we didn't want to hire a motel or a, what do you call it? Vandrahem? Yeah. Yeah, uh, a sleeping yeah. area. And it cost too much each night. So we slept in tents or in our the trunk of our cars. And that evening I made a story of me and Tuss, our, uh, one of our dogs, sleeping in the back of, of the car. And, and it looked really cozy. Yes. So I just like, okay, make a story of that. Yeah. And then I was like, here's my chance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can open up a conversation and we can begin to talk and we can, yeah, he can ask who am I am <laughs> and stuff like that. And then so I wrote to you like, oh my God, that looks so cozy. Yeah. Yeah. And I got back very cozy. Dot. Yeah. Like no smiles, nothing. Just. I'm not sure that's true though. You know that is true. I know it was those two. I sound so horrible. It was I'd just like... very cozy. Dot. Okay, I think it was a very cozy smiley, but no. okay. It was very no. dry answer, I can admit to that. I've always blamed it on that I was like at school, I didn't have time to answer and everything. Um, but it is, uh, I remember that very clearly. I talked about it with Pad, uh, yeah. who has been here as well, who, who you have met as well. Uh, because we hanged out a lot at school and after hours as well. Um, because then I had like three or four thousand yeah, followers on you Instagram. You four thousand. Yeah. Swedish follower. Yeah, exactly. Which I thought was the, like, the biggest thing ever. Uh, I thought 4,000 was a lot of people. Uh, so I answered to all the comments and I was very in engaging. Now I can't answer all of the comments anymore. Uh, but I remember clearly looking at your profile, talking about it with Pat, and I was like... Because uh, I was <laughs> obviously very attracted to her. But the problem was like... You get a bit skeptic online after a while. I was like, this is no chance this is her real pictures because there was no, like, you didn't update it very often. There was no stories. I couldn't check what was real or not. <laughs> uh, so I remember that clearly. That was like, oh, mm -hmm. yeah, sure. She looks this good. Uh, yeah, but you know what I mean? So cute. <laughs> yeah, <but it's, laughs> that's the truth. Like, you get a bit like, okay, I, I always think that you see, like, should seek out of your league, so to speak. Like, you should aim high, if that makes sense. Mm. Yeah, but when you meet someone that is feels way out of your league, you get a bit skeptic. Like, why is this person contacting me? Um, but yeah, so I wrote back very cozy, dot or smiley. Uh, no, it's, <laughs> I just really remember it as like, oh, he didn't want to talk with me. Yeah. Like that feeling. Okay, so I dropped the idea of uh, writing <laughs> yeah. more message to you, and. And then I remember I just been at, um, for you guys that don't know, I have a uh, hundred hours yoga teacher training. Mm. And I remember driving home for the yoga teacher training and sit in the couch and I was like, you know, really focus on, I'm gonna move now. Mm. Like I'm gonna leave the city. Make a transition. Yeah. Somehow. And then I was like, and something just, you know, that inner voice, that inner, I can't explain it. Something was just saying to me that evening, you have to try to write to this guy again. <laughs> and I didn't think <coughs> Sorry. I get... <coughs> I totally... <clears throat> okay, back on track. Sorry. But it went some fe few weeks between. Yeah, the way, yeah. like almost a month, I think. Mm, exactly. And I was just like, um, yeah, you have to write to this guy again. Yeah. And then I wrote like your long message about, yeah. I ask you, how did you do this? Yeah. Like, how did you find a cabin in the middle of nowhere? Were you scary? Um, are you lonely? Like, yeah. I really ask you all of yeah. these questions. Like, and I, so I didn't write you with like, a, I want to be your girlfriend feeling. I wrote you like, can you please 
help, and help me. me. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> because I'm, I'm gonna do the same. Mm. Um, and that was on the 2nd of December 2019. Yeah. Um, and since then we haven't stopped talking. We didn't stop talking. No. We rode together for eight hours a day. Yeah, I remember clearly I had like sore thumbs almost, <laughs> you know, too. like... And I usually don't like to wake up with my phone or go to like, you know, we always nowadays have it, you know, downstairs. We never have it in the bedroom. But back then I was just like, the first thing I, I remember it so clearly. The first thing I did when I woke up was like reaching for the phone, like, <laughs> has she written anything? Okay, yeah. <laughs> and then I could just disappear to that because I didn't have a, a proper job back then. Uh, you know, I had a lot of time to kill. So I had a yeah. lot of time to write as well. But you feel like a lost friend. Hmm. It was like... I don't know, I can explain it, but you feel like I know you. Hmm. Like we're, a last friend. We were on the same path, but you haven't really started yet, I think. Yeah. You know, you were where I was maybe two years before that. Yeah. Like when I was about to leave the city, thinking about doing something different. Yeah. Uh, so we were on the same path. You were just a bit behind. I yeah. think that's why we were connected so much as well. And I think that's amazing with life. Like I experience again and again, like when you begin to put something out like I want to do this and mm. your your mindset is on it and mm. you begin to take actions yeah people situations something like that will begin to drop into your life absolutely and I experienced so many times now mm. it's so crazy and you get so touched by it every time yeah I, I really think I've been talking about this with with you guys and you as well like talk about your dream out loud to both yourself but also to neighbors or colleagues or whatever because it it becomes more real for mm -hmm. some reason um, i think it has a real power in that yeah actually because i remember before we met i started thinking about like okay how much do i want to compromise on my like life situation yeah. do I, because i was so happy in the cabin but the only, I always said that the only thing missing is to have someone to share it with. Mm. I had Tuss, our dog, but <laughs> yeah, this would be a bit boring to just live here with a dog. Um, and I started to like, okay, should I compromise and maybe leave the cabin and move to a, a more populated area, mm. still the countryside, but to at least be able to meet people. Yeah. Um, I remember that clearly. And I was like, but that wouldn't make me happy either. Then I compromised too much. Yeah. So, yeah. what did we do? <laughs> we rode for eight hours every day yeah. for three weeks. Yeah. And but then I come with the suggestions. Yeah, I say. suggestion. Yeah. yeah. We were a bit of a crazy suggestion, <laughs> I would say. It was in the middle of December and New Year's Eve were coming up. I don't know if we have actually talked on the phone when you made a suggestion. I don't think so. No. No. Because I remember our first phone call. Uh, this is gonna be such an overly cheesy video, but I remember it's, it's so clear. I was sitting over there um, on the couch and I had the idea of us. I said like, let's try Danish and Swedish to begin with. You see if it, if it goes well. Mm -hmm. And you send me your number and I looked at the phone for like, I don't know how many minutes. Yeah. And you were like, can you please call me now? And I was like, I was so like, you know, when you were just shaking to like, pick up the phone um, and then I dial your number I was like hi and you said hi and you probably asked how I am or something and I was like <laughs> in Danish I was like I have no idea what you're saying not a word uh, now I like know I would say kind of fluent Danish and you know Swedish quite well yeah back then I didn't understand a word I was like I'm sorry we, we have to do this in English but yeah but then a few Oh, I guess a week later or something, or a day, a few days later, you came with with the idea that we'd hash, have a first date. But we live still, you know, 14 hours away from each other, so it's kind of a, like, how how oh, do we do, do this? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I was like, hey, let's celebrate the, uh, like Christmas Eve. Hey, let's celebrate uh, New Year's Eve together. Yeah, exactly. And of course, I will come to you. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Like you, when I told my girlfriends about it, like I'm, I've met this guy over uh, Instagram, and I'm gonna go to his cabin in the middle of the woods, 13 hours away from where I'm living. Yeah. And they were like, "Have you seen horror movies, Christine?" <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Are you crazy? Yeah. And I remember I didn't dare to tell my family, so no. I told them that me and my friend Mikela 
was going 13 oh. hours with train up in northern Sweden to have a yoga retreat for New Year's. Yeah. And and, and my mom was like, okay. That sounds like, good. <laughs> that yeah. sounds fun. Yeah. <laughs> I also remember when you were here, yeah. um, I didn't like the idea that you liked your family, but I totally understand it at the same time. But I remember you checked your phone one of the days because you were here for four days. Yeah. I think it was a very long first date. Um, but I remember you checking your phone like, oh, but, my mom has called me eight times. Maybe I but, should call back. I was like, but she have, she would never have let me go. No, like, I know that. I, I think she would have said, no, you're no. crazy. Which so, you were, but I'm happy crazy. you were crazy about it. Yeah. yeah. But I just, I felt in my whole body that you were a good guy. Mm. And I told my girlfriends, so they know where I was if yeah. you were crazy. Yeah. Like, but I also think that one part of it is actually that I had a bit of a profile online. You know, I had the blog, I had the podcast that you can listen to. You've seen videos of me. So there was like a, a person and other people you have read like blog posts and stuff had recommended me. So I was not yeah, this complete loner in the forest. Even though there were some facts that I existed. Mm. Uh, I have been in news articles. So there was a bit of, you know, yeah, I was a real person that was not a, hopefully not a serial killer. At but least. at the same time, you know, if I really want to be safe, I should have asked you to come to Copenhagen absolutely. and you could have rented a hotel room and then we could meet on public ground. Yeah, absolutely, like a cafe then, or something. Yeah, that yeah, could also have been absolutely. a way to do it, but no. <laughs> no. I want to go the whole way. Yeah, but yeah. one funny story as well was that you you booked the train tickets here. Hmm. Hmm? What happened then? I booked the wrong one. Yeah, she paid. It. It's quite expensive to go by train from all the way from <laughs> Denmark up, all the way up to here. Yeah. Uh, so you booked the wrong t- train <laughs> tickets, which is very typical of you, I would say now. <laughs> and like, whoops. Yeah. Um, and then you didn't even dare to tell me that. Uh, no, because just, I don't want to seem disparate. No. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I guess. So yeah, it was a very expensive trip up here. I have to buy two train tickets. Yeah. And it's not cheap in December. Uh, no. <laughs> Everyone travels around yeah. there. So, especially around New Year's. Yeah. Um, but it was a, such a crazy train ride. It was like in a movie because... Yeah, you connected with people. Yeah, I mm. connected with that... Um, what is kind of that? Um, you sit in four people, f- two, yeah, in a four seat we call it. In yeah, Sweden. but it was almost the whole the train. You all of mm. us to sit in the train. Um, Wa- no, don't say wagon. How do you say? You that? say wagon in Swedish. Yeah. Yeah, no, you just, this different section of the train. Mm. It's like cargo. Yeah. Yeah, I think they are. And there. this story just you know spread through because yeah. at first it was my. The lady I was sitting next to was like, yeah. what are you doing here as a Danish girl alone yeah. New Year's Eve? And I was like telling her the story and she was like, oh, that's romantic. And then yeah. she told and then suddenly when we begin to drive in on Sundsvall, like yeah. where you're going to pick me up, all the ladies, you were like a big group of ladies like, where is he? Where is he? Oh, yeah. standing like it was so much fun. Yeah. And I was so nervous. I remember like, yeah, I was shaking. Oh, I my God. I was just like, I remember also calling my friend again, Mikela, mm-hmm. and I was like, what if he doesn't like short girls? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not that tall. So I was like, and I was, I was like, what if I'm not his type? Then it's going to be really long four days. Yeah. I, I'm not going to stay there for four days. Yeah. But I remember it very clearly. Like it was, I was so nervous because I was standing at the train station in Sundsvall mm. meeting you and there's like 200 people coming off the train mm. and I was the only stand, standing facing this way um, so I had no idea like I knew what you were looking like and everything but there's still 200 people that I had to sort through and looked relaxed and happy and like yeah yeah and then you stood there and yeah. you were so beautiful yeah and I was so happy and you were so nervous so you almost have I to walked, run yeah I walked <laughs> so fast it was so embarrassing I was like I took your bag and then like, we went welcome to the and then woo. yeah <laughs> <laughs> because we went to the supermarket the first minute yeah. just to buy some dinner and so on. Uh, yeah. And I power walked through the supermarket just, <laughs> okay, this and this and this and this and this. Um, yeah. I remember that clearly. And then I had uh, went on your Facebook and s- that was a bit cheesy move, I get that. But yeah. uh, I went on your Facebook to look <laughs> at what she, pref- like you can have like interest list on Facebook when you were actually... Uh, active on Facebook, like yeah. music or genres and so on. And then you had listed uh, the tallest man on earth, which I also love. Mm. And I was like, aha, perfect. So then I 
accidentally put that song on in the car. I was like, oh, let's listen to some music. I just put something on. And then like, and then I had Tallest Man on Earth playing. And you were like, oh, you like him too? Oh, do you like him too? <laughs> and I tried to, tried to act surprised. Um, yeah. Yeah. And that was four days of just, it went really fast. Uh, but it was really weird. Not weird in a bad way, but just hanging out with a person for four days that you never met. In this kind of cabin. <laughs> yeah. You know. And she came in December, so it's, yeah. you know, very cold. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the roof wasn't insulated no. back then. It was way more basic Yeah. Uh, back then compared to now. It was intense and in team, mm. but that was so crazy because I really felt, if you already had asked me there, do you want to be my girlfriend? I said yes, because yeah. I was so in love. Yeah. And I just remember we were out walking. We that was actually what we did the most of the days. Yeah, we, we walked. Were, we mm. walked a lot around the nature and mm. talked and talked and talked. Yeah. And we had like this game, like thirty-three Christians. Oh, I think it's more. It I more? can link it down below because that it's a really so good cute. game. Yeah. Um, it's like it, the title of it. I tried to pitch it to you. I yeah. remember. I was like, it, the title of the game. <laughs> we don't have to talk about that. But the title was like. 42 questions to fall in love or something yeah. like that. Uh, but that was not my intention in that way. Of course, I already had a major crush on this girl, but it, I just saw that these questions were so good to get to know a new person. Mm. It doesn't need to be dating, uh, no. but it was really good questions that went really in depth and I got to know you on a exactly. completely new level. So we went through those questions. And a four few, days. Yeah, a few yeah. a day. Yeah. I remember one, um, uh, one specific question when I was driving you back. It was one of the very last questions I drove her back to the train station when you were going back to Denmark and You asked me okay number 38. Let's say uh, What's your relationship to your mom? And then we started talking a bit and then my mom had went through cancer treatment and everything and Then I just started crying my eyes out in the car next to this girl. I wanted to impress. <laughs> I was like fuck, 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 shit, shit, shit. <laughs> Yeah, that was not the best thing um, but that also shows how comfortable I was with you yeah. from the very beginning. Um, yeah, me too. I was. I re still remember it so clearly. We walked, you know, on the mountain behind the cabin, and I looked at you, and I was like, "This is my husband." <laughs> I was like, I could just feel it. This is my husband. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not even your husband yet. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I just felt it so clearly. Yeah. And then I told my mom because I cried on the train home. Oh, I was mm. so overwhelmed and. In love and yeah yeah and then she got the, the whole story <laughs> yeah and she was a bit concerned that you went all this way without yeah you know but then this rocky first half year because it took a half a year for before you moved in you moved in in June 2020 yeah um, but then we met at the very beginning of the pandemic which meant that our countries locked down completely um, which no one could like anticipate. So I remember you, I was sitting here by the fireplace. I remember so clearly I had plans to go to you for our, mm. I think it was our second date or something, no yeah. third maybe. Um, and I remember you calling like, hi, they're closing the border in five hours. I was like, I can't make it to Denmark in five hours. Mm -hmm. And even if I could, what if I get in and can't get home yeah. or, uh, so we didn't see each other for two and a half months, I think. Yeah, that was crazy. So we actually, we had two dates, one, one here, here and then one, one in Denmark yeah. and then we closed the borders mm -hmm. and then I was like, okay, I moved to Sweden. Yeah. So because I was, you know, on my way to, my plan with the moving out was to move out to the Danish uh, country countryside yeah. in Denmark in an old farm house. Mm -hmm. But then we were like, okay, you already have a house. So yeah. it's a bit stupid to find, you know, yeah. it's why not move into your house yeah mm. and i would have and i still have a very hard time yeah, leaving I this know. place so this is your that's that's the cabin and that's me <laughs> <laughs> that's not true but it's it's very high prioritized i would say yeah yeah um, this is your my baby yeah yeah it is but i've also <laughs> explained that to you that like the reason i love this place so much is because this is the the area and the house where I changed into the person I am today. Mm. So I think I've settled, settled so much roots here. Yeah. Um, it's not just a cabin, it also represents, I guess, who I am and who I wanted to be, I think. So it's crazy to think about that a single blog post 
with a Swedish podcast. Yeah. It could change it all. And that's why you have to go after your dreams and take actions. Yeah. Because nobody will come and knock on your door. I just want to say that we're not recommending driving out to weirdos in the <laughs> no. forest. Just to be like clear statement that no. like there might be some weirdos out there. So yeah. Yeah. But begin to take actions. Yeah. That and is don't um, wait to do it. I would say. Yeah. And don't. That was what we both thought. Like that was both we both did. Like I didn't think I will find love. I think I'm gonna do my dream myself. Hmm? And then love appeared. Yeah, I remember very clearly uh, that I talked to my colleagues at the time. Um, I worked a half-time gig in Stockholm. Uh, I remember like, should I wait to buy a house? Because I want to buy a house mm. with my future partner. And I had the same thing with Tuss, our dog. I was like, should I wait to buy a dog? Because it would be so much more fun to buy that with another person. Yeah. And build that relationship together. I remember that so clearly. But at the same time, like you were saying, like... I couldn't wait. Like, mm. what if we haven't met for another 10 years? Yeah, exactly. Then I would have, would have like, wasted 10 years of my yeah. life not doing what I wanted. But if you want to see more of Christina's story and, like, her angle of this cabin life and... You can go to my channel. Mm -hmm. um, I think you're going to link it somewhere. Yeah. Or... Some below yeah. or it's actually <laughs> popping up on screen right now. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a good start. And if you want to learn how I made a transition to this cabin from the city life, how I actually made it, I've made an entire ebook about this that you can check out somewhere on screen or down in the description. Thank you for watching this video about how we met, the <laughs> unlikely story. Yeah. Uh, and I'll see you guys next Sunday. Bye! Bye, -bye.